Hello and welcome to tuples. Now tuples are very similar to lists uh, in that they store information, a bunch of information, so why do we need a tuple? Well, tuples can't be changed. Remember lists, we could change everything, we could add things, we could take things, pop things off, we could uh, change one of the items into something totally different. Can't do any of that with tuples. Once you make a tuple, it's going to stay the same forever. It can't be reassigned. Yes, yeah, so we use the word immutable because that means it can't be changed. Mutable means you can change it. Think of mutants. So an example of it. Oh, and the tuple always has the parentheses around it. That's it's different from lists. So if you see something and it has brackets, square brackets around it, it's a list. If it has parentheses, it's a tuple. So here's an example of a tuple. I put one, two, and three in parentheses. So the only difference between making 1, 2, and 3 a list would be that I would use these square brackets around it. Okay. So remember, a list can change, but a tuple can't. So remember, if I have a list of 1, 2, 3, and I change the first value, the, the 0 index, to new, it will have new in it. I forgot to comment something else out here. If I try to do that with the tuple, so now I'm trying to change the tuple at the zero index to new, look what happens. I get an error. It won't let me do it. I cannot change a tuple even if I wanted to. The only be way to change it would probably be just to reassign it. So do the same name but do a new tuple. So again, we print my tuple and we can print my list and they look the, basically the same. You just print the type and you can, if you weren't sure, if you miss, somehow missed the parentheses and the brackets, you could always do a type on it and find out what it is. You can also do a length of it. So if you want to know how many values are in the tuple, you can run that and it'll give you three. You can also index and slice. So in, uh, index and slicing doesn't change anything, right? It just tells you what is at those values in the data set. So say I have a tuple, T, with my last name, a 1, and a float value. So again, with tuples, you can put anything in it. You could put lists in it. You could do anything you want. So we have these three values. And you can do the same kinds of things we did with lists on them in terms of showing what information it is. For example, here I did at for the tuple t, grab, show me what's in the one value index on. And when you run that, it will show you that there's 1 and 0, 0 0.4 in it. Uh, if I change that to just say 1, no, let's do the other one, 2. it would show me the point zero zero four. So you can do the same indexing and slicing. You can do a count method. Now there's almost no methods for tuples. There's really only two, because if you do this, watch, t period, oops, it's not working. There's count, and there is index. Those are the only two functions for a, a tuple. So unlike a list where you could do like 30 different things, there's only two you can do with tuples. You can do a count, which is useful for seeing how many of a certain thing there are. I have a, a tuple here with three A's and one B in it. So you could say, all right, well, how many A's are in it? I mean, I'll, this wouldn't be useful for this set, obviously, but if I had 100 letters, you'd want to maybe see, oh, which is the most common letter? So it's how many T's are in it or how many M's? So you could do a count for looking for that string, and it would tell you how many there are. Let's see, it's, it's the last thing here. It's a th There's three of them, but say you wanted to look for, oh, how many B's are there? You could run that too. Oops, forgot that comment. And there is one of them. It's right there. So 
it's, it's very useful for finding out how many are in a data set. The index will just find the first occurrence of that. So if I say, what's the first spot that the letter A is in? And obviously, the first one is in the zero location. It would say it's the zero. If I say, where's the first B? It would tell me it's in the third spot. So these are the only two things you can do with it. Uh, very probably limited use we see with this, but if you have something like uh, making a data set of the days of the week, you probably want to put in a tuple instead of a list because those days of the week will not change for as far as I know. Or maybe uh, the states of the United States, maybe they put that in a tuple if you don't think that'll ever change. Um, things like that would go in tuples. Otherwise, uh, good luck with tuples. Make sure you play around with this. There's a short quiz, and it's on to sets.